Kentucky Derby. Charismatic gets away quickly, and Answer Lively shows speed toward the inside. Cat Thief with the white blinkers, and Worldly Manor is up front, passing us for the first time. Now Val Hall shoots through, and Val Hall takes command. No On the outside, no. it's Cat Thief second. On the inside, it's Answer Lively third. Here comes Steven Got Even in red, moving up fourth. Desert Hero is fifth. Worldly Manor on the outside sixth, and it's a traffic jam at the first turn. Three ring on the inside, finds room and gains ground. The Philly moves up, Charismatic drops back. Back on the front end, Val Hall leads it by three parts of a lake. That's Cat Thief in second. Worldly Manor in blue on the outside, moves third. Steven Got Even is fourth. At the rail, Answer Lively is fifth. Desert Hero sixth, Charismatic seventh. Kimberlite Pipe is eighth. On the inside, the Philly, that's three ring racing, ninth, middle of the racetrack. Vicker is 10th at this point. First American shoots through on the inside, then Prime Timber, then Adonis at the rail. Ecton Park followed by Menifee, then the Baffert horses are fourth and third last. General Challenge and the Philly, excellent meeting. Lemon Drop Kid is 18th at this point. And K1 King. They're midway on the turn. And moving through on the inside, Cat Thief with the white blinkers has the lead. And here comes Worldly Manor, trained in Dubai, up to challenge. And Worldly Manor puts a head in front. It's Worldly Manor on the outside. Cat Thief at the rail. And Charismatic is coming on strongly. Down the stretch they come. Cat Thief digging in at the rail. Worldly Manor with Jared Bailey. Charismatic trained by Lucas on the outside. Now Lucas running one, two. Charismatic on the outside takes command. On the inside, Cat Thief in the middle of the track. Benefee is flying, but it's Charismatic holding on to win it by a hand. Benefee flying on the outside, and Cat Thief, I believe, was third. First away, Roman, Milan, and Galahadian closing in for that furious battle for the rail. Eight in all in this classic field, and the speediest of them all at the moment is Roman, setting up blistering pace. Let's listen for a moment to the roar of this crowd as Roman leads the parade past the stand. In a bunch at the turn, Bimelik runs well to the outside. Watch him. Now they straighten out for the dash down the backstretch, and the big news is still Roman with Bimlick second, and biding his time is Galahadian. Now, running head and head with the Bradley favorite is Dick, Myerland, and Sirota, with Royal Man and Pictor trailing far behind. That's the call, but watch it closely. There goes Bimlick. The champ is making his move. In the final turn, it's Bimlick, Dick, and Roman in a three-way fight. But the slow-motion camera's unfailing eye spots Galahadian. Moving up on the rail, a 35 to 1 shot, and it's here that Bimlick meets his challenge, the challenge of Galahadian. The champ gives everything he's got, but it's not enough. Galahadian, toting the silks of the Milky Way farm, is out in front. And of speed and rhythm with a lot of coordination is what you want. Follow Galahadian and Jockey Beerman in the ride of their lives. Great horse and a smart jockey urging that sturdy bay colt to the terrific climax of his racing career. And here is racing's biggest moment. Today it's Galahadians in a startling upset, paying $72.40 for $2. You'll hear that crowd roar, that is, those who had Galahadians. Kentucky Derby and Dandini and Spanish Chestnut both, both go quickly. Bellamy Road is right there with them. And on the far outside, it's going wild. So a stampede under us for the first time. And as expected, it is. Spanish Chestnut in front. Going wild right there on the outside. Bellamy Road not far behind in third. Flower Alley is fourth. High five, 50 twin horses. Closing argument, sixth on the outside. High limit is seventh at the rail. And Bandini is running in eighth position. Sun Pink ninth toward the inside. Buzzards Bay is tenth. A fleet Alex in tight quarters running 11. Three lengths back. Point Silver is now 12th toward the inside. Noble Causeway is 13th. And Jamba's Hero is now 14th. Wilco, 15th. Greedy's Galaxy, 16th. Giacomo, 17th in between horses. Sorted out as 18th. And then Don't Get Man is 19th, and Greater Good is the last of 20. 
45 and one fifth seconds among the fastest opening half miles ever in the Kentucky Derby. In the role of the pacemaker, it is Spanish Chestnut. Flower Alley second on the inside. Javier Castellano is now asking Bellamy Road at the half mile pole. Going wild in between horses, so too high fly. And Buzzard's Bay making a move on the outside, closing argument. A fleet Alex trying to thread his way through between horses. He will go inside as they round the fire turn. Three furlongs to go here. They ran three quarters in a bruising 109 and two. And here comes Bellamy Road, who's charging up on the outside. High Fly is moving with him. Spanish Chestnut is weakening. A fleet Alex is in behind them. Closing argument is in with the chance there on the outside. Buzzard's Bay coming down the middle of the track at the top of the stretch in the Kentucky Derby. High five, Bellamy Road, closing the argument on the far outside. Here comes a fleet, Alex, charging through between horses. Giacomo, don't get mad, late charge on the far outside. Coming down to the finish, closing argument, short lead. Giacomo, a fleet, Alex, it's a three-horse photo finish. And on the wire, it's Giacomo, who has won the 131st Kentucky Derby. Kentucky Derby! And it's Joint of the Dancers racing for the lead. Musket Man has some early speed on the inside. Here's Regal Ransom with some speed as well. Beneath the Twin Spires the first time. Regal Ransom and Joint of the Dance will vie for the early lead. Pioneer of the Nile is right up there. And then it's Papa Clem down toward the inside. He's now fourth. There's a party. Forwardly placed fifth on the outside. Flying Private is sixth. Freeze and Fire in and among horses is now seventh. Musket Man is eighth. Dunkirk is ninth on the outside. Then farther back down on the rail, that is uh, Atomic Rain, uh, running in the 11th position, two lengths back, and General Quarters is now 12th. Nowhere to hide is 13th on the outside. West side, Bernie is now, now down toward the rail, and then on the outside, at the back of the pack, beginning to move up now, is uh, Hold Me Back. Advice is also right there toward the back of the pack, along with Chocolate Candy Summer Bird. Advice, the last of them all, is Mr. Hot Stuff. So down the back stretch run, or even be fine, be well behind the rest of them is mind that bird. So down the back stretch run and join in the dance. An impudent long shot leader here, 50 to 1, taking the field through an opening half mile that was strong. 47 and 1 fifth seconds. Regal Ransom is third. On the outside, Pioneer of the Nile. Now Garrett Gomez asking him for a bit more. He's right there. Third on the outside, Desert Party is now fourth. Hold me back fifth toward the inside. Papa Clem threads his way through horses from six. Now Musket Man is now seventh. Chocolate Candy is beginning to come alive now, and he's eighth on the outside. Then down toward the rail, it's advice as the field turns for home. Top of the stretch, it's still joining the dance with a tenuous lead. Regal Ransom and Pioneer of the Nile strikes the front just outside the eighth pole. Musket Man is coming hard down the center of the track, and Papa Clem's right there too. Down toward the inside, coming on through. That is uh, my net bird now is coming on to take the lead as they come down to the finish in a spectacular, spectacular upset. My net bird has won the Kentucky Derby. An impossible result here. They're off in the Kentucky Derby. Maximum security in Vacoma had good beginnings, and they go out to the early lead at long range. Tani's close to, and there goes Bodie Express on the outside into the early mix. So they will lead the way early on. And then it's War of Will running in fifth on the inside. Spinoff is sixth. Improbable is seventh position in between horses. Then cutting Huber to the outside, followed by Country House. Then Code of Honor, Tax, and Clouse Cut Marfay. By my standards, is alongside about 10 lengths off the lead. Great Magician rides the rail into that turn, and then comes Coaster alongside of the Great Tacitus. Break of another two lengths more, back to win, win, win. Game winner is in behind him. He's second last, leading Japan's master fencer to the backstretch. So on to the backstretch they go in through this first quarter mile in a sensible 46.62 seconds. Maximum security leads the way by three quarters of a length. Long range Tani pressing the pace under John Ford on the outside second. Or Will is down toward the inside under a snug hold in third. Then it's Bodie Express fourth. Improbable behind horses in fifth. Bacoma sixth on the outside. 
Then it's Code of Honor who rides the rail into the far turn. Country Houses alongside and then spin off. Pluska Parfait is next. And on the inside comes Tax. Game winner is wide on the turn, beginning to pick up his stride near the back of the pack. But Maximum Security continues to lead the way. Midway on the far turn, he's a length and a half in front. War of Will is second. Long Range Toddy third and four wide and moving up is Country House's Bodie Express plummets through the field. And here comes Code of Honor, and he bursts through an opening on the inside of Maximum Security. And they're into the stretch. Country House on the outside. Code of Honor down toward the rail. Maximum Security keeps on fighting. War of Will is there too as they come to the final furlong. It is Country House on the outside. Maximum Security is so dead game. He keeps battling on. Maximum Security. Country House one, two down to the line. Maximum Security wins the Kentucky Derby. And then it was Country House second, followed by Code of Honor third. Well, nearing the top of the stretch, he impeded the one horse war of will. Mm -hmm. Maximum Security moved out of lane before he was clear, forcing the rider of number one war of will to check up a little bit. Now, it at that point, the 20, the runner-up Country House, whose claim foul was on the outside yellow cap. It ha actually happened before that. It did not affect number 20. He didn't He didn't have to steady because of this, but the one horse did have to steady. Yeah. So here we see him as we're going into the far turn. This is the three furlong pole, the green and white pole. There's their passing right now. War of Will, the horse with a white stripe on his face, directly in behind the horse with the pink silks. Maximum secured. Now he has a lane to run. So his jockey is taking him outside of Luis Saez and maximum security. Right there is where number seven maximum security came out a lane or two, yep. forcing War of Will to steady. They disqualified him. They did. So for the first time in the history of the Kentucky Derby, the horse that crossed the line first has been disqualified. After the objection, Country House wins. They're off in the Kentucky Derby. And summer is tomorrow, had a great start and goes immediately to the early lead. Messier is away running with speed, Crown Pride to the outside. Epicenter is going to be taken back a bit, down toward the inside as Tapa goes up outside of Chargent. And farther out and close to the pace is Cyberknife. Then comes on the outside Zozos as they race by us for the first time. It will be summer is tomorrow to lead the way. Crown Pride on the outside, second Messier follows in third, Zozos fourth. Cyberknife is fifth to the outside. And then it's Tapa, charge it behind them. Epicenter finds himself in mid-pack here. Pioneer, Medina, smile happy next, and then send him to the inside at Guaida Barrio. Last at Causeway is after that. They're followed by Tawny Port. As they head to the back stretch, simplification is next. Then comes Tiz the Bomb, Rich Strike, Modonagal to the inside. And then the two trailers up the back stretch are Barber Road and Happy Jack. That opening half mile was, whoa, blazing fast. 45.36 seconds for Summer is Tomorrow, who heads up the back stretch in front with Japan's Crown Pride right alongside. And Messier goes up in between those two. The pace continues to be hot. Zozos is next after three quarters in one minute, 10 and four fifth seconds. And now Epicenter comes splitting horses and is moving up quickly as Crown Pride takes the lead around the far turn. It is Crown Pride battling with Messier. Their stride for stride. Epicenter and Zozos in behind them. Cybernet sweeps up on the outside. Sandon gets the rail run, and they're into the stretch. It is Messier, Crown Pride, and Epicenter is coming up on the outside. Epicenter has taken the lead as they arrive into the final furlong. Sandon is coming after him. Epicenter and Sandon, these two, stride for stride. Simplification down the outside is next. They're coming down to the wire. Epicenter, Sandon, Rich Strike is coming up on the inside. Oh my goodness, the longest shot has won the Kentucky Derby! Red Strike! Derby Day is a special time in the Bluegrass State. A time-honored tradition of fast horses and fearless jockeys. But one jockey stands apart from the rest for his amazing run on the dirt at Churchill Downs a century ago. Louisville native Roscoe Goose. Goose set his sights on the Derby, riding a long shot named Donorail. Donorail wasn't highly thought of at the time uh, for a lot of reasons. 
Thomas P. Hayes, the owner, breeder, and trainer of Donnerail, basically to think very highly of him as being able to win the Derby. He did feel, with a lot of encouragement from Roscoe, that he could get a piece of the race. Uh, there was a quote I, that probably took place right when they were putting Roscoe up on Donnerail before the Derby, where Hayes reminded him, uh, just paraphrasing, that, you know, we're going for cornbread here. We just want a piece of the race. He didn't really think he could win. Sent off at 91 to 1 odds, Roscoe Goose stunned racing fans with a win on Donnerail that returned backers $184.90 for a $2 wager. It's a derby record which still stands. The Golden Goose died in 1971, but his amazing ride and belief that Donnerail could be a winner continues to capture the imagination of race fans everywhere.